Hi, and welcome to another edition of Further Westbound. I'm Kevin Finch, the director of the documentary film Westbound on the life of jazz guitar genius Wes Montgomery. And this channel is dedicated to Wes and the many people who have memories and thoughts about this amazing guitar player. We have a great one for you today. This is Mimi Fox. Mimi Fox is a six-time winner of the Downbeat Magazine International Critics Poll. Uh, she travels the world playing her jazz guitar and has just released a new recording this year on the 100th anniversary of Wes Montgomery's birth, celebrating Wes. It's called One for Wes, and it, it is an organ trio. In other words, uh, she is part of the trio along with an organ player, just like the original configuration of Wes's very first album on his own. So going all the way back to that one in 1959. So pretty cool. Uh, so check out Mimi Fox. This interview is with uh, Robert Montgomery, Wes's youngest, and it's very much a heartfelt interview and candid on both sides. So here you go. Let me ask you a question. I, I ask these questions usually on fan base. And then I thought about it. When you were introduced, how were you introduced to my dad? And because, you know, when I was when I asked that question, like I said, I'm usually asking with the fan base uh, and not asking like to a musician because, you know, you're playing. And you may have just stumbled across my dad or, you know, there's other ways you heard him other than somebody introducing you to jazz, because I always believe that you don't just come to jazz. Somebody introduces you to it. Yeah. And so what was how did you come about meeting who Wes Montgomery? Actually, it was a teacher at a little funky. Wow. It was a tiny little funky music store in Oakland. Okay. Uh, I moved to Oakland in 1980. Um, I left New York and moved to the Bay Area. And I was teaching at a little music store at like 78th and MacArthur and, and just starting to play with folks and meet everybody. And one of the other teachers or, or someone there turned me on to Wes. And the first album that I heard was Full House with right. Live at the Subo. And yeah. that album, uh, still to this day, Every song on that album I play, every song on that album I love to pieces. And so I, I heard that album and I had just started to really dig into jazz. I had played pop and blues and stuff. And then right. I had played a little classical guitar. It was just something I thought was another world, though. I thought it was beyond. It was something that was just mm -hmm. a whole other, you know, a whole other galaxy. Yeah. And, uh, and when I heard Wes and I heard those recordings, um, the, the first one was Full House, and then I got turned on to Groove Brothers. It was a process. It's, you know, um, and it was my first, actually, Wes was the first transcription that I ever did when I had a teacher, and he said, listen, if, he said, you're a good guitar player, Mimi, but if you want to play jazz, you got to listen, and you got to transcribe from the masters. And so I said, well, I got this Wes Montgomery album. He said, you can't, he said, you can't start anywhere better, and you can't end anywhere better than Wes. <laughs> yeah. And I think yeah. about that. They, yeah, that's kind of it. And so, you know, all of these tunes, I started to learn them and I started to learn the solos. And then, uh, you know, one thing led to the next and pretty soon I had a West collection, uh, you mm -hmm. know, and there were all different mm -hmm. things, different reissues, some willow weep for me, then I'd hear yeah. a bootleg recording here and this and that. But, um, you know, as I tell my students now, it's kind of like there's so many great players, but there's Wes mm -hmm. and then there's everybody else. Right. Wes set the bar so incredibly high i mean it was so musical there's so much i mean i i could i don't know robert i could sit here for a, a month with just you and me talking and play yeah. things and say this is how it, this is how wes influenced me because yeah. you know the whole the whole deal with jazz is once you um in fact henry johnson our mutual friend once told right. me, i think clark terry told him that you um you imitate you assimilate and then you innovate. Okay. And, uh, so for me, it was a process. And the more I learned, ironically or paradoxically, the more that I dug into Wes, mm -hmm. uh, the more I begin to f find my own my own voice. You know, because of course you live your life, and we're all different, and things that happen to you inform what you do. But 
Mm-hmm. That's a very long answer, Robert. To your no, question. that's no, no, because that was that was well well said and needed to hear. You know, because I thought I'm listening to you. How were you able to find your own sound? You know, it, you see, I think that part of it is, um, well, like for example, um, you know, one of um, one of your dads. I can't believe I'm talking to you. I sort of got to. I'm gonna pinch myself because <laughs> I just got back from a short tour. I was in Mexico, and, and I just got back like late last night, and. I'm still pinching myself that I'm sitting here talking to you because it's all, it just feels like a wild, you know, wild dream. But um, I always try to put my own spin on things. And I think, um, for example, like one of your dad's great, uh, one of his most famous pieces, uh, I think would be four on six. Uh, right. But for me, I tried to reinvent it. Yeah. So then I'm like, here I am, little Mimi Fox, little Jewish girl from Queens. What the hell am I going to do that's going to be different? And I said, well, what if I try to take this beautiful composition and mm-hmm. do like an impressionistic kind of thing and do yeah. a solo? And so that's kind of how I approach trying to, mm-hmm. um, you know, ha- kind of how I found my own voice was bringing who I am to the table and uh, and trying to honor the legacy of Wes. Because all of us that, um, that, you know, have have lived and breathed West. Like, you know, we we all of us feel the the excitement, but also the obligation to honor him by continuing the you know lineage. Yeah, that's a beautiful. That's a beautiful. Uh, well said. I personally, you know, it's funny because um, I uh, was with um, I was out in Montana at a guitar workshop. They have these beginner work, beginner classes, right? Do you play, Robert? Do you, do you play? Are you kidding me? I'm going to tell you the story. So, um, <laughs> so I'm there, and and there was a doctor there. He was a surgeon, and he had all these guitars. And he said, "Pick out any one. I'll let you use it if you sign it." So I picked one out, and I signed the back of it. So I'm in this beginner's class, and I'm there. And, you know, they're showing me and I just stopped and said, you know what, I'm not doing this. And the instructor said, well, what's going on? So tears kind of came out. Well, they didn't come out. They actually poured. And I said, you know, I'm going to be the fan like everyone else. And I'm going to sit his shoes on the shelf and I'm going to look at him from a distance because I could never um, accomplish that. He was my dad and I didn't seem the way everybody else seemed. So, you know, if I was going to emulate, I would want to do it on my own terms. And so my emulation would be his personality. That I will try to be the humanitarian and the man that he was in that aspect. But picking up a guitar, no, that would never happen. There's only one Wes. He is so many times imitated, but he's never duplicated. And so I would have to uh, uh, accept that. And so I did. That's very touching, Robert. You know, I think I can't even imagine what it'd be like. And I think I think for me, when I started reading more and talking to people and then meeting people that had played with Wes, you know, Mm -hmm. like Billy Hart, um, you know, Billy recorded with me um, on an album I did. back I think in 2007, 2006, 2007. And, okay. um, you know, and I hear about what an amazing man he was. I'm sure he was a beautiful father. Yeah, that just deepens it for me because, you know, someone can be a fantastic musician or composer. Uh, and in Wes's case, he was both. And also, I mean, in my opinion, you know, one of the great geniuses, musical geniuses of the 20th century. And if there was any um, true justice in the world he would be held up as so by all of the uh professors and the like who uh basically they have their degrees and let's just leave it at that um but i will say that um you know so learning of his humanity of who he Mm -hmm. was the totality of who he was uh it just makes it all the more meaningful for me because you know someone who who I admire so much and who has taught me so much, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, knowing that he, that he was a great human being and a great dad to yeah. you. 
Uh, wow, that's that's just that just adds adds to an impossibly beautiful uh, you know um, soup. It's it's yeah. just it's too perfect. It's too wonderful. Yeah. That gives you something to think about, doesn't it? Robert Montgomery with Mimi Fox. Mimi Fox came to Indianapolis, Wes's hometown, to play a concert not that long ago in 2023. And as I said, she has a new album out. It is one for Wes. So uh, a great tribute from someone who really idolizes Wes Montgomery. Hope you enjoyed this one. We have many more to come on Further Westbound. And our documentary, Westbound, The Genius of Wes Montgomery, is about to broaden its television distribution uh, throughout the state of Indiana. We'll have more details on that later. Meantime, if you like this channel, Further Westbound, the continuation of the documentary, uh, don't forget to subscribe. It's free. They don't ask information from you. And it's all yours. So hope you continue to enjoy it. Until then, thanks. <laughs>